John Chaka is officially out as the Arizona Coyotes general manager. What led to his departure and what more will come from this story? We'll discuss all the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have the continuing story here. John Chaka is officially out as Coyotes general manager. Now, there's been speculation over the last few days over what's been going on with the situation. Uh, it really ever since the Taylor Hall meeting took place between um, ownership and the president and CEO without Chaka being present, there's been lots of speculation. And we finally got some more detailed information today. We had a statement from John Chaka. We had a statement from the Coyotes organization. Uh, lots of information from insiders Craig Morgan as well as Elliot Friedman and others. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now is we're going to hop onto the computer and take a look at an article from sportsnet.ca which kind of outlines everything that we know here so far and then we'll discuss the situation a little bit further. All right, so here's the article in question on sportsnet.ca by Elliot Friedman currently titled Coyotes owner to ask Bettman to adjudicate split with Cheka. Now this article was recently updated after some more information became available here. It says, according to multiple sources, Coyotes owner Alex Marullo will ask NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman to adjudicate the ugly divorce between the organization and John Chaka, thereby determining the executive's future. This is a contractual dispute, said one source on Sunday afternoon. Uh, of course, down, down here it says, John Chaka has quit as the general manager and president of hockey operations, a statement released by the team. The club is disappointed in his actions and his timing as the Coyotes prepare to enter the NHL's hub city of Edmonton, where the team will begin postseason play for the first time since 2012. Cheka has chosen to quit on a strong and competitive team, a dedicated staff, and the Arizona Coyotes fans, the greatest fans in the NHL. Now, clearly those are some pretty strong words here from the Coyotes organization. This is obviously goes to show just how upset they are over this. I mean, for them to go on to say that, you know, he quit on the team, a team that's very competitive, quit on the fans, you know, I certainly did not expect them to kind of come out swinging that way. But again, there's a lot behind the scenes here that we don't know. Now, Steve Sullivan, who was assistant general manager with John Chaka, is uh, now the interim GM. Of course, he's worked with the Coyotes organization for quite a while, worked in various roles, and has been an assistant GM for the last... I think uh, three or four seasons. Uh, so he's certainly been preparing for this kind of opportunity. And I think uh, he'll be a pretty good opportunity here for him to, to be a full-time GM longer term. I mean, he's got a lot of familiarity with the organization, former hockey player at the NHL level, and has been groomed quite nicely here. So I fully suspect Sullivan likely does become the full-time GM here in the not-too-distant future. I think the decision for that will be determined uh, before the beginning of next season. So over the next couple of months here. Now, Chaker released a statement as well, not just the team. Uh, he released a statement to Craig Morgan of azcoyoteinsider.com. And he says, the past four years have been the most enjoyable of my life. In Arizona, I became a husband and a father while working as hard as possible to make the Coyotes a Stanley Cup contender. I love our players, coaches, staff, and fans. And I very much wish I could be with the team in Edmonton. Sadly, the situation created by ownership made that an impossibility. So obviously he's kind of, you know, taking a swing back here. Now he goes on to say that that's all I intend to say on the matter for now. A fuller, more detailed explanation may be necessary in the near future. Until then, I wish the Coyotes good luck in Edmonton and thank every member of our pack for the support shown to Catherine, our daughter, and myself over the years. I also want to congratulate Steve Sullivan as he steps into a new role. We've worked side by side for years. He's a great person and a terrific hockey mind. So here's what Elliot Friedman says he can piece together. Now, approximately a month ago, Alex Marullo, the owner of the Coyotes, received a request from another NHL owner to speak directly to John Chaka. Now, initially, the request was denied. Now, there's talk. It could be Buffalo. Uh, there's also talk that there's New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey makes a little less sense considering they recently made uh, interim GM Tom Fitzgerald full-time permanent. Um, but the Sabres do make sense. But now there was another information here on Twitter after this article was put out just right before I began to record this article from Darren Dreger indicating that he has confirmed that it was not the Buffalo Sabres. But out of all we've heard so far, the Sabres made the most sense 
because we were told this was not a lateral move. Uh, and obviously the, the uh, Sabres people, the, the Pagulas, own multiple franchises in the sports world. And it was believed that he was going to be working at a higher level to kind of be some kind of a president or some kind of management role, executive role, uh, to oversee all of their organization. So it wasn't just a hockey role, which would make a lot of sense. But if what Dreger is saying is uh, true, then obviously it's not the Sabres and the Pagulas were not the ones seeking permission in this case now of course uh, originally like i said this was denied and then it later went on here it says that uh, understand that marillo up until the saga unfolded was an enormous shake of fan he believed in his vision and extended him to the 23 24 season and helping him spend to the cap which we just saw this past year which was certainly very different for them to be going uh, you know that much on salaries but obviously like i said the request here was originally denied but then eventually he relented and allowed the conversation to happen this will be a critical part of the process when, when batman has to uh, review here he's going to argue that he was lied to though about what was discussed and that shake said he had no intention of leaving what if anything is in writing on this now obviously you know, this is a situation where Chaco was believed here, at least the, the organization side of the story, is that he was told that he needed to grant permission for him to seek another business opportunity, but it wasn't going to involve him leaving his current role. So if that was true and that's what was told, that is very misleading. So I guess we'll have to find out later what, uh, you know, if there's truth to that or not. So it says, from what I understand, a godfather asked offer he could not refuse was made some sources indicated it was not a lateral move bigger than the current job chaco was doing which was obviously gm and president of hockey operations it's believed that this involves an ownership group with teams and other leagues and chaco could have involvement with those teams as well so as i mentioned that's why a lot of people were speculating about the buffalo sabers here so clearly you know this was like i said a deal he couldn't refuse which is why he obviously wants to pursue it so the coyotes were stunned disappointed uh, and obviously uh, things kind of really soured with the relationship between the two sides once that became clear uh, obviously the title of gm or president of hockey operations could not be involved at all in the, the role that he was pursuing uh, and obviously they were going to do that uh, to make sure that he could prove that this was not a lateral move and obviously you know if they're going to let him out of his contract they needed some reassurance on that. Now, that was just one of the issues that doomed any type of settlement. Obviously, there's accusations of compensation was demanded as well, uh, which obviously the NHL does not allow. So if the uh, Coyotes were going to lose Chica to another NHL team, uh, they would not be able to be compensated, as we did see sometimes in the past. So obviously, with everything that went on, the relationship between Chica and ownership deteriorated in a hurry. Uh, Chica did not attend a dinner meeting last week involving ownership and Taylor Hall. Uh, there were reports that Chica was excluded. There have been reports that he actually is the one who set it up and was encouraging ownership and the new president and CEO to learn more about the business side of the hockey operations that to, to get involved with that as he was preparing to leave his role and try to work out a separation here for him to get out of his contract. Obviously, Sheikha has not been a part of any recent conversations with agents. Uh, Steve Sullivan, who represents the Coyotes on two GM calls this past week. Uh, we know the ownership's been talking to players and agents as well. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense here now that we know more of this, that it was obviously you know a work in progress over the last little while. Uh, Chaco was hoping to put together a transition plan with ownership, which would have allowed him to kind of still go with the Coyotes to the Hub City bubble where they're going to Edmonton here, uh, which they were supposed to leave today. Uh, and obviously it would have also had an impact on him kind of finishing up the season, slowly transitioning over to Steve Sullivan, and then you know him going on to whatever this new opportunity was. So certainly some very interesting developments there. Uh, obviously, Marillo's fury was illustrated in the team's statement for sure, as it says right here. Uh, it's a tough one for the team's fans who are hoping for some stability under Chica's long-term extension, and we're looking forward to some meaningful games against the Nashville Predators. Uh, Friedman goes on to say he's not a lawyer, so we can't predict how this is going to go, but the Coyotes are enraged, wanting to make sure their rights are protected, and it's obviously going to come down to what's on paper and the commissioner. So obviously, Gary Bettman is going to have a big say in this. Some are also speculating as well if, uh, obviously, as we know, like we talked about before, that the Coyotes are still under investigation for, you know, uh, testing of junior age 
hockey players outside of the NHL draft combine where they were doing some illegal testing to kind of gain an edge uh, when it comes to drafting. And maybe uh, with the Coyotes not having Chaka in the picture anymore because he would have been ultimately responsible for that. Maybe Gary Bettman and the NHL will either dismiss that or possibly go softer on them. Maybe they won't be punished quite so much. But there's still a lot with this story that's going to be evolving here in the coming days. So certainly a lot of information there that we just covered in that article. Certainly a developing story. I don't think we've heard the last of this. Certainly John Shaka is going to be a hockey person that we have to keep our eye on. I think there's going to be more to the story soon. Wouldn't be surprised if he does end up working for another NHL organization, as the article mentioned. Certainly some speculation about who he was talking to in that regard. So let me know your thoughts on this situation. Do you think John Shake is going to end up working with another NHL organization? Do you think there's going to be any more that we learn here which could detail what's going on behind the scenes in Arizona? Let me know your thoughts on this story down in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.